A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and, the, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had been crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. Then he laid his hands on her, and immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured her on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, you hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? And when he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The word of God for us, the people of God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Imagine this. It's a typical Sunday morning, 11 a.m. We're here at church, and Heather gets in the pulpit and begins to preach. Then, right in the middle of her sermon, someone comes up to the front of the church and interrupts her. Heather, I have a crisis. I need help. Upon being interrupted, Heather stops preaching and goes down from the pulpit to help this person. A similar thing happened when Jesus was teaching at a synagogue one Sabbath. A crippled woman appeared before him. When Jesus saw this woman, he stopped, right in the middle of teaching, to heal her. He dropped everything to do God's work. In the middle of the summer, 15 youth and five leaders from Duke Memorial piled into three vans and headed west to be the hammer and the automatic drill of Jesus in Rutherford County, North Carolina. This year on Appalachia Service Project, my group worked in the home of Miss Sylvia, a seven-year-old woman recovering from the loss of her husband in February, as well as a recent heart attack. Miss Sylvia and the nurses who frequently visited her throughout the week watched us as we took all the furniture out of her kitchen, pulled up layer after layer of stubborn linoleum, removed waterlogged, moldy, cockroach-riddled pieces of wood, climbed underneath her old mobile home, screamed at the sight of camel crickets, installed insulation, and pieced together her new laminate floor. I've got to say, as much fun as ripping up Miss Sylvia's floor was, sometimes I wish I could have been like Jesus and just said, Miss Sylvia, your home is fixed. <laughs> your heart is healthy. But I couldn't do that. I just had to sit there, sweating through my overalls, and knock out that last sliver of floor while Miss Sylvia coughed in her oxygen mask. Although taking out the old floor was more work, putting in the new floor was stressful. I'm a perfectionist, and it was hard for me not to freak out every time a board was put in just a hair out of place. It was then that I thought of a morning devotion from earlier that week. ASP's theme this summer came from 1 Samuel chapter 25, verse 6. Peace be to you, and peace be to your home, and peace be to all that you have. Each morning before breakfast, a different youth leader led a devotion that revolved around the theme. On Wednesday morning, a devotion was led by a young woman. She described an Instagram post she had seen that morning, which reminded her to strive for peace rather than perfection. The woman talked about how many of us had come on ASP aiming to make houses perfect and fix them exactly by the book. But that's not really what our homeowners were looking for. They were instead looking for peace. Miss Sylvia reminded me beautifully of that devotion when, 
gazing over her new imperfect floors, she said to us, y'all are building me a castle. When I looked at that laminate floor, I saw mistakes. But Miss Sylvia, she saw beauty. For me, pressing pause on my summer to serve God on ASP will always look like Miss Sylvia's smiling face looking at her brand new floor. <laughs>